Hello everyone, my name is Vasan Nagarajan. I'm a technical marketing engineer at Cisco. Uh, welcome to the second video on campus automation, uh, where we will be talking about how to enable per device configuration on a 9800 wireless controllers. Now we'll be focusing on two setups here. One is where the 9800 controller is configured using network profiles and site assignment on Catalyst Center. Second is where the 9800 wireless controller is being migrated from Cisco Prime onto Catalyst Center. Now we've already talked about what per device configuration is in our previous video, but just to give a quick recap, this is one of the latest features which we introduced in 2379, where we enable customers to discover their wireless controllers. Now your wireless controller could be an assurance only wireless controller, or it could be a controller which is being managed by network profiles and site assignment. And third is where it could be your wireless controller has been migrated from Cisco Prime onto Catalyst Center. So all these kind of wireless controllers can be discovered and then we learn the configuration of these uh, controllers and we give you a way to visualize the configuration as well, uh, similar to what you would see on the 9800 wireless controller. And finally, we also allow management of the configurations using Catalyst Center itself. Now let's take a look into how to enable this per device configuration for a network profile based wireless controller. Now there are some prerequisites before you can start using this feature. First is make sure that your 9800 wireless controller is running iOS XC release 17.12 or later. Catalyst Center version is on 2379 or later. Your device licenses, we support essential license onwards. And for devices which are provisioned using network profiles, as in this case, we only support config visibility today. So now let's take a look into how to enable per device configuration for a network profile based wireless controller. Now this controller, since you're already managing it, would be part of the inventory. So once you go ahead, um, click on the device, click view details. Now, as you can see here, the configuration tab only has the mobility option as of now, before we enable per device config. So let's go ahead and enable per device configuration. You'd see the option on the top left corner, click on that, click on enable. So it will take a couple of seconds. Uh, so after that, you can clearly see that we show you that this is being managed via site-based network profiles. Then the final and third step would be to go to the inventory and resync the device. So the process is pretty much similar. Click on actions, inventory, and resync the device. This will take some time to resync, but uh, once this resync is complete, if you go back to the view device details, now you can clearly see that the configuration tab shows much more configurations, right? Uh, as you would see for a 9800 wireless controller, like your WLAN configs, your RF configs, your AP configs. So all the configurations which you would see on the 9800 wireless controller, you can see it here as well, once you enable per device config. Now the final step of enabling per device config was to resync the wireless controller. So what exactly happens during resync? So as you can see on the screen, these are the set of commands which Catalyst Center runs on your wireless controller during resync. All of these commands are show commands. So Catalyst Center is basically going to run these show commands to collect different outputs from your wireless controller and update Catalyst Center with the latest config. So we do not push any configuration on the 9800 wireless controller. Now the use case for a network profile based controller. So today, as I said before, we only support visibility of the device configuration. So let's take a look into how it would look on the Catalyst Center UI. So once you go into the device details, as I said before, you would see a lot of other options show up under the configuration tab, like your WLAN configurations, which would have your WLAN profiles, your policy profile related configurations, then your RF, AP joint configs, your tag related configurations, security configs. So basically all the configurations which you would see under the 9800 UI. Now we also have a search option. So if you want to search for, let's say the policy tags, you can type that in the search option and that is going to show you what are the policy tags available. So once you click on the policy tags, it's going to redirect you to the policy tag section where you would be able to see all the policy tag configs which we have learned from the wireless controller. And we also clearly tell you that this device is managed using site-based network profiles. So all the configuration here is in read-only mode. You cannot make any changes to the configurations from here but you will have to go through the network profiles and the provisioning of the wireless controller to make the changes. You cannot make any changes from this workflow here. Finally, we also show you 
the manage access point section where you would be able to see all the access points which this wireless controller is managing and also all the tags which are mapped to it. So again, these configurations are view only, read only, so you can't edit or modify any of these configurations. Now let's take a look into how to enable per device configuration for a wireless controller which has been migrated from Cisco Prime. Prerequisites are pretty similar, so 1900 wireless controller should be on release 17.12 or later, Catalyst Center version 2379 or later, and device level licenses, we support essential license onwards. The recommendation is to migrate the wireless controller using PDMT tool, but it's not mandatory. Now, enabling per device configuration in this scenario is pretty much the same as what you would see for an assurance setup or a network profile based wireless controller. The only extra step here, which we recommend is to move the wireless controllers to Catalyst Center using PDMT, because that simplifies the migration of topology, your site hierarchy, your devices to Catalyst Center and makes it simple. The discovery process, which we talked about before is simplified when you use this process. Apart from that, the other steps are pretty much the same, where you go into the view device details, enable per device configuration, and then finally resync the WLC. Now, we already have a video which is covering the use of the PDMT tool. So I'll link the video in the description box below. And the use cases for WLC in this setup is exactly the same as what you would see for an assurance only setup. We enable customers to uh, learn and we also provide the visibility of the configuration. We also allow the edit of configuration, delete of the configuration, and finally also to create a configuration from scratch. Now, we already have a video published for an assurance only setup where we have covered each of these use cases in more details. So I'll link the video in the description box below. Now that brings me to the end of this video. Uh, here are some references to get more insights on per device configuration with Catalyst Center. Now, as I mentioned before, we already have some videos on our YouTube channel where we have talked about how to migrate from prime infrastructure to Catalyst Center and also the last video where we talked about how to enable per device config for an assurance only setup. Uh, for more training videos, please visit our Catalyst Center YouTube channel where we have all these videos documented. Thank you.